It's week two of the NFL preseason, where depth charts and playbooks will be put to the test. It's the Armadillos and the Mounties, and it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League finds us north of the border in the beautiful city of Toronto, Canada. Coming up the second week of the preseason, and we've got a solid matchup in store between the Austin Armadillos and the Toronto Mounties. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason after a loss jumping up. Here now to get us started is Logan Cook, and we are underway from Toronto. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. So out comes this offense to take over for the... They'll fake the handoff. Now go off. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball, and if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. Back to throw, Goff. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. So give him two yards there on the completion. And now it's third and three. Goff now looking to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Second and ten. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Goff going to get this to Gibbs, and he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. The 12 yards and time and picking up the first. Now a give to Gibbs, running left. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. Tackle made by Devin Lloyd, the linebacker. Second and six. Now it's Goff, off the bootleg. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Gone. Complete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. 
Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. Badgley's kick is good. And the opening drive of the game yields three. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be let out by a man who took that huge jump everyone had hoped for in year two, one of the game's brightest young stars, and that's Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational-type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A man coming off an 1100 yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And the result here a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And they'll go again with ETN. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Straight ahead, ETN. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. It sort of looks like they stopped some fighting them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Now Lawrence. This is caught. It's Kirk. And touchdown! Christian Kirk, 33 yards. And the Armadillos are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. But Charles, here in their opening series, they said they had certain plays scripted for certain players. That looked like a well-designed play to get one of their top targets involved. Yeah, let's face it, Brandon. A player of his talent is a problem for any opponent to defend, and we saw it right there. They tried to deny an open lane to him. He still outplayed the coverage and scored the early touchdown. Good luck trying to figure out how to defend him as this game moves on. McManus's point after is good, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Back onto the field comes this offense ready for their second drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On second down, here's Goff. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Heavy set out there on third and one. Now gone. Well, they would have gotten the 
conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the huddle, no mental mistakes. Are they starting to look like a good offensive football team? So not just running into the punter, but roughing the punter. And I'm struggling with this one. You know, you're watching it, partner. Is it more the first rather than the latter? This is a tough one. Almost feels like he felt like he had to call it on that play. Gibbs straight ahead. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and eight. They'll go again with Gibbs. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Here's second and seven. Now go off. They find Williams on the slant. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Four catches now on this drive alone, and they can't stop it. It's another first down. Goff now looks to throw. That's complete to the portal. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 16 yards, a little deja vu from the previous play where they got 16. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll run with Gibbs. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. On the play leads to second and goal at the nine-yard line. Again, it's Gibbs. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Toronto in possession of the football. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Goff. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. And still yet to find the end zone. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start to drive at the 25. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. He'll drop this one off with ETN. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam coming out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, a run with ETN. And he powers his way up past the 30. 
Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. Lawrence will throw. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Oh, this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. ETN up the middle. And he'll push forward to the 37, gain of two. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. On third down, Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down per minute and then out. Obviously, no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return, and they will take over first and 10. Toronto's offense ready to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Back to the air. Goff on second down. He's got it complete to Gibbs. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 15 yards on the play, first down. But it certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Golf. And that's to Amon Ross in Brown. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. Here now, second and four. They'll fake the give. Now golf. And that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. And he is out of bounds, but not before. He's inside the 30. 27 yards there, a first down. To the air again, Goff. He's got the tight end folks on right side complete. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. And they'll run it with Gibbs. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play there, second down. Another run for Gibbs here. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Throwing on third, golf. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter, but I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. Badgley able to punch this one through, and they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, 
has still been able to come away with points due to his leg. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Austin's offense ready to go again. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now ETN to start the drive. And some space here. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 50 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. A shotgun snap, and again to ETN. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third and one, it's Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Now Lawrence to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. To throw is gone. And that is incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. So possession goes over here on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. Now the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. This offense so far on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Now Lawrence steps away. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Levi Onzerike charging in and finishing off the sack. 
Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Now here's a whistle and a timeout. It's called by the receiving team here. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be first and ten as they take over. Toronto's offense ready to take over. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Here's Gall. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. Two yards on the pickup there. And that's going to bring up third and two. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Third and two. Golf. He'll go right back to St. Brown. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. Badgley able to knock this one through, and that will push the lead up to 12-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. This offense back to work now late in this first half. With his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Lawrence. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for naught. Now third down and seven. Now Lawrence. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Now Lawrence on first down. And the pass is intercepted. He was looking for Ingram. It's Brian Branch with it. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. But just a lot going on there in the middle of the field, and this one winds up a turnover. Yeah, the runner crossing route here, and the idea of it is to get defenders confused about who to go with. But if you throw it too early, sometimes it's your quarterback that gets confused, and here he throws it into coverage and gets it intercepted. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Setting up the screen, this is Gibbs. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. 
Goff now looks to throw. He's got his running back out of the backfield. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This from 54 yards away. Badgley's kick is good. And then that makes this a 15-7 game. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach turned his defense. The firemen, go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a minute. Week two of the preseason is upon us. Each team now with just one more game after this one, and then we will get it all started as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. In our game, still a lot to keep an eye on. Guys battling, trying to make a ball club. We'll send it back to two guys already on our team. That's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the end zone comes Chris Claybrooks to return. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. For this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. So out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter, and Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, but we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down, but in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went in at the half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? They've got his man complete. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now Bethard. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Levi Onwazurike picks up his second sack of the afternoon. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. A short throw there to Strange. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Bathard. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A very important third down conversion right there, because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. He stiff arms him. Give him nine yards on the carry there. A good run. And now second and goal. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness. Just about got him into the end zone. Back to throw Bathard. Dumping it off for Johnson. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That second down play nets a minus four. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little 
swing pass out to the right side before lost yarding. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the front down, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now McManus will line up for the field goal from the right hash, and this one just a chipping. The kick by McManus is good. And the lead slims to five now at 15-10. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now it's the backup, Bridgewater. He's got his tight end over the middle. That's Ferkser. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Throwing is Bridgewater. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10, as they've got things rolling on this drive. Here's Knight on the handoff, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find the hole. Third and four. Bridgewater to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. This is Knight. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rush is just too off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. So the completion good for six yards. And now two yards to go on third down. A run with Knight. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Running for it, Montgomery. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. And we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender and the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. On second down, Johnson. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards there at a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. 
But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That's good for 28 yards. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. To throw is Bathard. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. There's Charles Harris getting home for the sack. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18 to throw is Bethard. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Aiden Hutchinson, he's the one that drops in this go around, and that pass rush getting strong here, back-to-back -back sacks. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. They'll throw here, Bathard. Well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Aiden Hutchinson drops him again for the second straight play, and it brings up fourth down. And the attempt at three will have to come from the other end of the field as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Welcome back to Toronto. As we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. And the lead is cut to two now. It's 15-13. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. Toronto's offense ready to take over. They've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Throw left side complete. That's Knight. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. Austin's offense ready to go again. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. They begin the drive to Johnson to about the 35 second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Here's Beathard to throw. Yeah, to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is brought in at the 21. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. Toronto's offense ready to take over. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. 
They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that will work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? That one, a first down pickup of eight. On the carry, here's Knight. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. Bridgewater now on second down. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Bridgewater. And that's brought in by Knight. Good contain. No gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. And I know that one didn't work out the way they thought, but I don't think it was a bad time to call this play. You're thinking on third down, you might possibly see some pressure. You might see a blitz. So they tried to set up the screen, but that one was well read, and they stopped them for no gain. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Austin's offense ready to go again. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Bethard, throw over the middle, pulled in here by Farrell. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tank Bigsby. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 11 more on that one, and another first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. They stay on the ground. This time, it's Johnson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Here's Bathard to throw. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Running from the gun, Johnson. And he was brought down by big Levi Onwazurike. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Looking to throw on second down. Bathard out to the flat here for Johnson. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now we've got a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Out of the gun now on third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Coverage is awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And he missed it. It's no good. And they'll remain down by two. Well, listen, now, no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their backgrounds. They were all county, all state, at other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. Bridgewater on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. 
to give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. On first down. It's night, and if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. On second down, it's night. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Badgley able to punch this one through, and that will push the lead up to five. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. No return here for Clay Brooks, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Austin's offense ready to go again. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Kind of picked themselves up from that one. Now a screen set up for Johnson. And a nice pick up there as he'll get about nine, and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two-minute warning. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. But remember now, no overtime in the preseason, but where the score is at now, overtime would be unlikely. If these guys can put it in the end zone here, they'd be looking pretty good. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. He's back to throw. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Here's Barkley. He's got his target. That's complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. This is first and 10. Barkley. And he can't get it thrown away. He's taken down. Now another timeout called for by the offense. As a stopper with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Well, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Back to throw. To the sideline and incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. 
They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Well, partner, it's just preseason, but it always feels good to be in victory formation, taking the knee for the W. Yeah, I've often thought to myself when I watch these preseason games, some teams need the wins more than others. You know, if you're established and you're used to winning, not quite the same. But if you're trying to learn how to win, it's important to get it done and to be able to kneel down at the end even better. Well, we all just got a heck of a show, partner. This was a close game for a long time. Close at half, close down the stretch. Home team finds a way to get it done, a narrow victory. Yeah, they finished with a flourish, didn't they? Because there were times where each side looked like they were the better team out there. And the outcome was in doubt for much of this game. Every snap seemingly more important than the previous one. Great effort from the guys visiting. But in the end, how about those guys in their home stadium finding a way to win? So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. So long, everybody.